Welcome to my kitchen. Um, I hope you can all hear me and see me now. Please just uh, put your comments. If you're working, join me from Talking Girls Grammy, you know the deal. Um, uh, uh, you can watch live. Uh, yeah, I've got questions coming down there. You can just watch live. That's absolutely fine. So uh, comments down the side there if you're watching from Talky Girls Grammar School. If you want to watch this on YouTube, uh, that's fabulous. We've got a great recipe for you today. Um, leave your comments along the bottom, whether you're in Canada, Africa, uh, China, wherever you are this morning. We've got lots of people watching this around the world. Leave your comments on the bottom there um, if you're watching this back on YouTube. But like I say, if you're watching this live, girls, down the side there from Talky Girls Grammar School. Um, so yeah, uh, if you can watch live today, that would be great. We've got a great recipe for you today. Um, but we're going to be doing a fish cake. So we're going to do fish cake patties, so like a burger, but made out of fish cakes um, and, uh, and fish. And then we're going to be putting a bun on that. So I'll show you how to make a quick bun. I'm going to talk to you a bit about that lockdown larder, about what you can do with it. If you haven't got ingredients at home, that's fabulous. Um, so don't worry about that. If you're just watching along, that is great, uh, Tilky Girls, and you can cook it another time. This is obviously available to watch again. Um, uh, you can pause, rewind and watch again and do it this evening or do it tomorrow or do it whenever you want to, girls, and then send me your post pictures this week. Um, and uh, say if you're if you're watching online, I'd love to see your pictures as well. So please uh, let us know how you're going from YouTube. OK, so let's get going. Um, now, I'm just going to quickly flick through to the recipe. Those of you from Talk Girls Grammar have obviously already seen it, um, but I'm just going to quickly show the rest of you um, who are just joining us today what the recipe is and how it will work. So that's what we're making today. We're making fish cake patties. Uh, food commodities is what we're looking at. I'm using a hotter education package here, a hotter dynamic package uh, called Exploring Food for Key Stage three so um, that's the uh, the templates I'm using if you are looking at that online um, a learning objective today we're going to demonstrate how to prepare cut and coat a fish dish uh, we're going to practice some knife skills using the cooker and we're going to understand protein denaturing what is that weird and wonderful word what does it mean we're going to oh, find out that for you today um, so uh, equipment today a sharp knives chopping board three dishes or bags fork small bowl baking tray um, we'll go through that one in a bit more detail in a moment ingredients tin tomatoes if you haven't got tin new potatoes, sorry, tin tomatoes, tin potatoes. If you haven't got tin new potatoes, uh, just a standard potato would be fine. Uh, onion, that's great. Spring onions, if you've got them. If you haven't got spring onions, I'm going to show you some alternatives to that, or to, uh, which you might be able to get available much easier. Parsley, dill, ginger, paprika. We're going to be doing some lovely seasonings. Um, I'll let you know what you've got and what you let us know what you've got, and we'll say what you could use. Uh, tin fish, so uh, tuna, salmon, that sort of thing. We're going to go with a tuna today. A couple of eggs and some bread crumbs and then if you've got some extra bits and pieces a little yeast the flour salt and sugar um uh, we're gonna make some bread rolls but if you haven't i'm going to show you some alternatives then which you might go to using your lockdown larders here's the recipe first the recipes here it's a potato fish cakes a fish and herb herby patties um this is what we're going to be doing we're going to get boiling up those potatoes we're going to be mashing them up lifting them out mashing them up i'm thinking tin potatoes because it might be something you might be able to get hold of in lockdown instead of fresh potatoes but if you've got fresh potatoes brilliant even better peel it um chop it um boil them up um and then let them go mash them down uh chopped up chopped up onions spring onions um i'm going to show you some alternatives to that um uh, spices you've got some spices and herbs there to season um again i'm going to talk you through some alternatives to that um uh, so we can do this with our lockdown larder um some mashed up i'm thinking tin tuna maybe because you've even got fresh fish with tin tuna tin salmon uh, will be fine with that one we're going to mix it all together we're going to shape it we're going to coat them i'm going to show you tell you about coating and then we're going to be kicking them off uh, now, if you're making a bread roll as well, we'll also be able to quick go at that one. Uh, no need to if you haven't, if you've got your own bread rolls, or you just want to have them inside of two slices of bread you've got. That's fine. I'm going to show you how to make some quick bread rolls, but I'm also going to show you how to do that without any yeast whatsoever. OK, so um, that's the main one, though. The potato fish case is what we're looking at today. Any more comments? Can you say hello so I know you can hear me again? I know we uh, that, would, that would be great. Uh, any girls, so if you want to let us know down the side there, who are watching this one live. OK, uh, let's uh, let's go back to um, to me. Um, so um, I'm not ready to cook. I need to be ready to cook. So what do I need to do? I need to go and get myself ready to cook. And uh, as we know, when that we're getting ourselves ready to cook in the kitchen, whether it's at school or whether it's at home, um, we're going to follow the same sort of procedures. And that's something we call mise en place. OK, mise en place is um, what comes from the French. It means to put in place. So you are going to have a go at doing that. You're going to put it in place. And an easy way to remember what you, all the things you need to put in place, whether it's about you, your workplace or what you're doing is Hattie. 
H A T T I E. So what does that stand for and how does that work? Um, so uh, so let me just quickly show you. I'm going to go back to that PowerPoint again and we're going to work through it. Um, so uh, let me just quickly show you what that is. Um, so Hassie, um, starter, um, we need to get ready for a practical. So to get ready for a practical lesson, you need to get yourself ready. You need to get your area ready. You need to collect your equipment so it's all ready. And the Hattie is what we use to remember it. Um, Hattie stands for H, tie your hair back or wear a hat. Wash your hands. Very important at this time. Put an apron on. Let's get that apron on and covered up. Clean your table with antibac spray. Make sure it's clean and neat and tidy. Um, have a tray ready. It's always very useful to collect the next two things, which is your ingredients and your equipment. So you are ready to cook. Um, so that is what we are going to be doing right now. Um, I'm going to do it with you so we can um, we're going to have a look and do this together. I'll move you around the screen and we'll move you around so you know what we're doing together. Um, let's do that together. So let's go around my kitchen. Um, so here's my kitchen at home um, and we're going to go around and we're going to do all of those things right now. OK, what well, so things we need to uh, have, we need to make sure we got some hot soupy uh, water and some soap. Um, so here we are, got the soap there. Now you need to obviously wash your hands properly. Um, so washing like that is great. We need to be make sure um, we are um, washing our hands um, like that. So but then you need to get inside your fingernails, inside the fingernails, brilliant thumbs. Make sure your thumbs are all done. Don't get the back of your hands. Make sure that's all clean as well. Uh, around the wrists, let's make sure we are properly clean and neat and tidy. Then hot soapy water okay so hot soapy water is what we need so um, we need to make sure again wash your hands like that get into those nails fabulous thumbs back of hands wrists uh, let's make sure you are all clean and neat and tidy okay so um, make sure you have done that now make sure you've washed your hands now I didn't need to I didn't need to put my um, didn't need to put my hair up. Um, I haven't got very much of it there, so um, I didn't need to. But I did need to obviously wash my hands and make sure I was clean and ready to go. Now, once we've done that one, let me just put that one in the bin. Um, the next thing we need to do is make sure we got our aprons on. So we need to protect you and protect the kitchen from where you're working. So make sure you've got your aprons and your protective clothes on. Um, I'm putting my uh, school chef whites on there. There we go. Um, so we are ready to go to so make sure you have got yourselves covered. Make sure you're protecting yourself from the food and the food from yourself um, and make sure we are working hygienically this morning. And like I said, that's your mise en place. You're getting time to get ready um, and uh, very important that we do all of that. There we go. Um, Chef White's on, apron on. Let's make sure I'm protected and we're protecting the, there. There we go. Oh, OK. Apron on. So um, apron on, Caesar on. Ah, hopefully now we are ready to cook. And um, we're going to go through what you need to have ready. I'm just going to sleeve up as well. All good. Um, ready to go with you this morning. All right, let's move back to my workstation and uh, let's uh, let's get on with the next part. All right. Um, so once we've got ourselves ready, we need to start by making our fish cakes. Now we're going to be making um, our fish cakes and we're going to be looking at a few different um, aspects of that. So um, we uh, first thing we need to do is we need to get our potatoes ready. Now um, you could use um, a few different things. Obviously, if you've got a fresh potato, but uh, fresh potato would be great. And you can just make sure you're peeling away, um, peel away before we're doing that. Remember, sharp, these are sharp. So whether you've got a peeler like that, or you've got one of those peelers that goes across the top, they are sharp, they've got blades on them. Make sure when you're doing these ones, we are just peeling away and we're just making sure you are not going to go near finger. So you can peel that one up and then uh, once you've peeled up your potato and you've got all of that off and you started peeling it away, um, chop it up into fine little pieces, put it in some boiling water um, and then once it's soft, you can put a fork in it and pull it out and it falls off. Um, once it's soft, um, then you can start mashing it up. And that's the first bit of what we're going to be doing. We're going to be creating mashed potato. Okay, mashed potato is going to be forming the basis of it. So potatoes are good. Um, potatoes are good. The, the good um, starch potatoes, good source of fibre there, um, good source of carbohydrate. Um, so if you've got fresh potatoes, brilliant. If you haven't got fresh potatoes, we're in a lockdown larder situation. I know that one, so it, different people might not be able to. So if you can't do that one, then a tin of potato will do just fine. OK, so we've got um, some uh, tin new potatoes there. Um, here we go. Some tinned new potatoes will be absolutely fine. You can use some tin new potatoes um, and we'll do that one today um, with you. So that again, some of you might not have fresh 
vegetables at home or it's che cheaper um, to go with some tinned ones, that'd be fine. Um, if you can't, let's see what other things could they say. Uh, could you use a mashed potato? Yes, you could use mashed potato if you've got packeted on there. We're just using what you've got in the larder there to be able to create um, your fish cake. So I, while I'm doing talking to you here, I'm just um, just undoing there. Oh, my fancy uh, piece there. It's just undoing. Hopefully, oh, there we go. Uh, so I've now got my tin potatoes. Okay, so tin potatoes um, just there. Um, you can just see that one on the screen there um, and it's in the water already so it's got water in there okay um, we're going to cover the tin uh tin potatoes with some water so put a little bit more water into there and we're going to be boiling them up in uh, in a pan for about simmering away for about five minutes and so we'll get bring them up to the boil and then we'll reduce it to a simmer for about five minutes now normally on these um these tin potatoes here um they would be saying to you uh do not do not do not do not boil uh, because obviously you break them down, they're already pre-cooked into those ones. With these ones, obviously fresh potato, you're going to need to actually chop it up and boil it. Um, the idea is we're going to break it down so we can make it into a mash. So we will we will do that one. So um, so um, let's let's do that. And while that's um, let's go and go back over. Um, I'll do it in real time, like as we're doing it with you. So um, let's back over to my kitchen area. I'm going over to the hob now. Um, so on the hob here, um, you can just about see. Here we go. We've got frying pan. We're going to use for later. Um, we've got a sauce pan here um, and there. Um, we've got we've just been up there. Let's get some more water there. There we go. Uh, to save you some time. You might want to just uh, start with some boiling water in a kettle. Be careful with boiling water. Um, so uh, you could just start with a bit of boiling water um, and pour that straight in from the kettle. Um, alternatively, uh, just get it from the tap and then start to boil it up. Um, don't forget to try and put a lid on it because you're going to be more fuel efficient. You were thinking about saving energy and um, it's going to be boiled faster quicker with a lid on because all the energy is inside that one. So um, that would work more efficiently or we'll put some kind of lid on there when you do it. So um, we're going to be boiling those up now. So in they go. Let's do that one. Potatoes into there. Now, if you're using it straight from the can, then you'll notice that you're going to need to uh, add a little bit more water to that just to cover it. So I'll just put a little bit more water in there. Little bit more. Um, or uh, alternatively, like I say, you can get it straight from the uh, kettle if you've already boiled the kettle today and you want to boil that up. That's going to um, be a, a good as well. And we'll leave that one, we'll put a timer on there for about five minutes, OK? Um, and that should be absolutely fine. And I'm just going to switch that on then. Uh, remember with pan handles, pan handles should not be pointing directly out because if I walk past now, I'm going to brush into it. So think about safety there. Your pan handles should be pointing away from the outside so you're not likely to knock into it. OK, think of a little bit there about cooker safety there um, when you're using the hob and using that. So make sure your pan handle and make sure the pan handle is not on top of anywhere else where there's any heat. OK, so we don't want to be putting it on top of the heat there. We don't want to be putting the hand over that way. You want to be off the heat and we're just going to uh, boil that one up slowly for five minutes. Nice and simple. Nice and simple. OK, a lovely little recipe here for you to have for break or lunch today. OK, um, I'm just going to uh, put the heat on that one. OK. Put the heat on, cut the lid on, medium heat, that'll bring it to a nice boil and then we'll, uh, we'll come back to that one. All right, um, so we've got, uh, we got, oh, there we go. So we've got the potatoes on the go. Um, brilliant. We're now going to move back to the air chopping area and we're going to go and get um, the onions and garlic and herbs and mix all those bits up as well. OK, so uh, we'll just go and move those ones over there. Oh, sorry. Give that a quick check on there. Yeah, so it's simmering away nicely. Um, so, um, simmering away nicely. We just keep that one on there, keep that one on the boil. Bring it up to the boil and then we'll keep that one there. Five minutes. I'm just going to put a timer on for five minutes um, so we know to do that one. And in five minutes' time, we'll come back to that. All right, next thing. So, we've got the potatoes um, are on the boil. Um, they bring it up to a boil, then we'll slow reduce them down to simmer. We've got them there for five minutes. They're going to just be in the background there for five minutes. Um, next thing we need to do, we're going to be working next on getting all our chopping, and we're going to be chopping up some onions and some garlic. Now, uh, sorry, some onions, uh, spring onions, and some onions there. Now, if you haven't got spring onions, and this is the reason I was a little bit late this morning, um, we can use some alternatives. So I've got, I've dug some spring onions up this morning. Um, so I've got some actual spring onions, which is good, good uh, here. Let's get that one. But I've also got some of this stuff. 
Now, this is absolutely brilliant. And um, this I got out of the field over here. It's growing at the moment. So now if you can't get hold of spring onions, this is growing a uh, wild at the moment. Now this is what we call a three. Let me grab some of it so you can see. This is called a three cornered leek or a three cornered onion or sometimes called wild bell onion. Now, how can you identify this? It looks a bit like a blue bell, but it's white. And it's got a green line down the middle of it. I don't know if you can quite see that on the camera. I'll just hold that one up so you can see. It's got a little green line that follows down the leaf, down the uh, down the actual bell or flower. Now, the next thing to look for, I mean, uh, is a really obvious one that really makes it stand out, is that the actual stem has got three corners, three sides to it, and uh, it's got the three sides are like a concave side. So it's really easy to identify um, in the fields if you're looking for this. So it's got three corners, sorry, it's literally got three, three corners, three sides, three concave sides that go in. So if, if I chop this one in half, I'm just, uh, in fact, just tear it in half, you might just be able to see up against the camera there. You see that's got three concave sides, really easy. Now the other thing to really easily identify is it smells of a cross between onion and garlic. So very, very. So if you can't get hold of uh, spring onions at the moment and you're out on your exercise um, uh, during lockdown, um, get some of this. The bulb looks like a spring onion on the end there. It is really lovely stuff, tastes delicious, smells wonderful. And this is what we call three cornered, uh, three cornered leek, three cornered garlic, wild garlic. It's got lots of different names um, and uh, really lovely stuff. So we're going to use a bit of that in there instead of this. Well, I've also got some spring onions from the garden. Um, so I've got some spring onions from the garden. We're going to be using some of this as well. We're going to chop that up and I'm going to chop up an onion as well. So we're going to do a combination of bits and pieces there. Let's start with an onion though. Um, let's start with your cutting, go back to your cutting skills that you've done previously. And I know we've shown you how to use this one before, but I'm going to just uh, go through it again because it's a nice, easy one to remember. Uh, let's go through and it's a good skill to have. And that's how to do an onion. So I'm just going to move my camera down a little bit so you can see um, the board here. Uh, right, so on the board here, um, you uh, can see, here we go, there we can see, see my board there. Um, now I'm going to chop up an onion now to start with, and then we'll come to the spring onions in a minute. So there's my onion. Now, how do you chop up an onion? Um, so let me just quickly go through the steps. I know we've done it before, but I'll just go through again for those who missed it on the previous videos. So um, we're going to imagine the onion is um, like a, a, a witch. Okay, so point it out at the top. Smelly feet at the bottom. Let me just draw that one up on there. Oops. Let's get another kind of pen. That can get um, and onion. So here we go. There is my onion. You can see that on the board there. Um, and you can see that it has got a magic hat on the top. Point it out. And we go magic hat on the top. We need to get rid of it. And it has got smelly feet on the bottom. Smelly feet. Going to make us try. We're going to try and stay away from the base as, as, as much as we can. So we're not going to cry when we want to do this. Tonight. It's nice and safe. Doesn't look like a witch. There we go. There we go. Okay. Here's my witch. All right. Uh, now, what we're going to do is we are going to cut this up um, using that analogy over there of my onion witch. So uh, here's, here she is. And what we're going to do is we're going to chop this one up. Now, got a variety of knives. Oh, let's just quick remind us of different sorts of knives that you might have in the kitchen. So uh, different sorts of knives that you might have in the kitchen. Um, you're going to probably have um, a few different knives. Um, here we go. So you might have a few different knives. Um, you might have a, a really large chef's knife, like one of these. Be careful with the chef's knife. Or you might have a smaller knife, like it's a preparing knife. Um, different sorts of maybe something in between, like one of these sort of knives. Knife safety. So let's just think of knife safety. We need to be very careful with knives, okay? So make sure you only carry one knife at a time. Make sure you're pointing it at the blade down, down to the side at the back um, when you're carrying that. So you carry it so it's down like that. Only ever carry one knife at a time. OK, um, make sure when you're washing up, you don't drop the knife into the bowl. Make sure you're using um, a brush to brush away. Don't be using a cloth to clean the sides or dry the sides. Leave it on the draining board at the back. So when you're not using it, it's not the ball. That's the buzzer going there. That means that you need to switch off my potatoes. So just go and switch the buzzer off. Switch off the potatoes. I'll leave them in the pan there just a moment to um, keep them hot. But potatoes are done. 
Right, onion. So um, so we got our onion, we got our knife. I'm going to use a chef's knife tonight, today so you can see it. I would probably suggest if you're using this at home, you're going to use a little paring knife, okay? But just so you can see it better on the TV, TV screen here, I'm going to use a chef's knife. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hold the witch around the tummy. When we do so, we form an archway, what we call a bridge, and you're going to be cutting between the bridge. So you're going to put your knife between the bridge I'm going to do a bridge cut and that's going to go straight to the bottom there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my knife in the middle there. It's going to go straight to the bottom. Uh, it's not going to go near my fingers because my fingers and thumb are away from the middle and I'm just going to slice down the middle. OK, so let me just hold that up to the camera so you can see what I'm doing there. Can you see that now? I'm just going to literally holding that one so that it's going straight to the middle. Now, very, very important here. At this point, we don't want to release any of those chemicals that are going to oxidize in the air. They're going to form a, um, something that's going to irritate our eyes. OK, so um, I'm going to put the knife away at this side there. So I'm going to get those onions and I'm going to very quickly place it flat down on the work surface there. So flat down on the work surface, cut the witch in half. OK, um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the magic hat, not the smelly feet end, not the root end, but the hat end. OK, and we're going to use the next of our uh, cups and that's the claw. So thumb right back, fingers over the top. We're going to form a claw over the top. So um, I'm going to use that claw to hold down my food and I'm going to put the blunt side. That's the blunt side, not the sharp side. The blunt side of my knife against my knuckle. And I'm going to use that knuckle, uh, that claw to form a resting point with my knife. So it's like that resting with the knife to cut away from my fingers and into the food. OK, so that is away from fingers and into the food. Always cut away from your fingers. I'm going to do this. I'm going to slice the top of my onions off, the witch's hat. OK, so let's get that so you can both see. Not the roots, but the top. OK, so here we go. Slicing that one away, taking that one off. Slicing that one away and taking that one off. OK, so knife now down, place it at the back and let's return. Let's have a look at what we've done there. So um, what you've got, I'm going to hold it up to the camera, but don't take it off the chopping board yourself. You can see I've taken the top off. I've left the root on the bottom and I've taken the top off. OK, um, let's return to my diagram here on the board. Now you can see what we've done here. Um, we've actually done two things. We've done a bridge and we've done a claw. OK, let me just quickly go through that. So the bridge, number one cut. Bridge. There we go, bridge, and that went straight down the middle. And it gets straight down the middle um, using a bridge. That's that one there. Second, and after I did that, I then did the claw. Now the claw is my fingers, thumb, thumb right back, fingers over the top, and then a claw away. And the claw, I went the other way. So two claw. All right, so I've done my onion one and two. Put your knife down now safely like I did. And the next thing we need to do is we're going to pull back the skin from where we took the, hat, the uh, magic hat. We're going to pull it back the skin down to the feet. OK, so we can use our fingers and thumbs for this one. So here we go. Um, fingers and thumbs. What we're going to do is we're going to just pull back that papery outside skin down to the feet. Now, if it comes off, don't worry. But we're just going to try and keep it. Don't need to pull it off. Just going to let it. Just pull back the skin, pull back all that papery skin with fingers and thumbs. Get your fingers and thumbs underneath it and start to pull that back. OK, so you can see there what we've done. We've got the onion um, inside and all revealed. Now that's going to also give us our next cutting line. Let me show you up on the board how that looks. Um, so you can see the uh, onion we've said cut, we cut bridge, then claw on the board here. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to then root, um, take down uh, the skin and we're going to go down and show you the next stage. Um, so let's have a look. So your onion will look now something like this. All the skin down there, you've moved it up that way. You've moved it down. The feet are still underneath, smelly feet. And that is your onion reveal. Now, the good thing is down the side, this is going to actually reveal the next part of um, where you're going to cut. Because if you look now very carefully, you'll see there's some very thin lines that go down like that on your onion. Let me show you that on the board there. Uh, sorry, on the camera there. If you just have a look on there, you might just be able to see on the camera. There are some lines now that go down the onion. And they just follow down. Now, we're going to use those lines as our next cutting line. 
OK, um, so you can see on the board there, they're going down and we're going to use those as our next cutting line. So here we go. So we're going to just uh, do this one together. Um, I'm going to grab my knife and if I just move the camera down again so you can see what I'm doing, um, you can see there that, um, is that one over the way? Uh, move that out of there. All right, um, so you can now see what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my bridge again and go back to bridge. And I'm going to cut down those lines. So for me a bridge around the center, I'm now going to cut down as many of those lines as I can between my thumb and forefinger. So there's no chance of them being able to cut in. There we go. Just going to cut down those. All right, we do the same on the second one. I'll cut down there, cut as many of those lines as possible as I go. OK, so I've done that one. Now I've used the, the uh, the analogy over here, I'm going to, just going to go back to the board here. And what I've done is I've done the third cut, which is a bridge, third bridge. And I've gone down this way. OK, so I've cut down. Final cut, I'm going to go back to the claw. So I need to put thumb right back, fingers over the top. And I'm going to form a claw and I'm going to go the other way again. So fourth cut is the claw. And I'm going to cut the other way. OK, so I'm going to cut the other way and what we're going to end up with is our beautifully diced um, onion. So I'm um, using my, go back to the camera. OK, I'm going to cut the other way, so fingers Thumb right back, fingers over the top, and I'm going to slice the other way. And what you'll have then is you'll have your beautiful diced up onion. Okay. Remove that. Do the same with the other one. Claw. Going the opposite direction now, like a noughts and crosses, and I'm now going to cut the other way. Brilliant. There's pieces off there. Clean my decks. And we have now got chopped up onion. Lovely. Now we always use the um, we always use the bridge and claw when we're unsure of the shape or size. If it's a round one, we do start with the bridge. Always start with the bridge, and then we go to a claw. We go. We the only exception when we don't start with the bridge is when something is long and thin already. Now the things that are long and thin already are my spring onions. Um, so I've got my spring onions here, or are now just washed up, or um, my, you can use that uh, three cornered, um, a leek or three cornered onion, that wild one that I picked out in the fields earlier, and that would work perfectly as well. So you get the onion and you get the garlic as well. Now, um, let me just grab some of that. So um, I'll just, oops, just grab some of that on there. Um, so this is um, it's a bit of spring onion. Uh, now, because it's long and thin already, we're going to use a lot of this. We're going to go back with our claw. So we can use that one. Same with my, um, there we go, that's the uh, three cornered one. If you can just have a look, I'll just chop that one so you can see it better, that three cornered. So if you look up at the camera there, can you see that on the camera there? That's that three cornered, when you cross section, so so easy to do it. it smells lovely. OK, so I'm going to use a combination of both spring onions and this. So if you can't get hold of it, then you can do some wild foraging. There are some rules with wild foraging but you need to be very careful of. Um, so you need to be 100% sure of what those wild things are you are going to go and get. OK, 100% sure. If you're not 100% sure of what you're going to get, there's some apps out there you can use to make sure that you get just right. Um, there's some links to those on my other YouTube uh, videos. I've done one on foraging, so just follow those rules if you're unsure. OK, um, so we said if they're long and thin, you can go straight in. So with a um, claw. So let me just see. We've got our onion over here. Let's move that one over to the side. We now have got our spring onion or wild onion or wild bell onion or three cornered leek or three cornered onion, whatever you want to call this one, and our spring onion. We're going to both cook, cut them in both a very similar sort of way. So thumb right back, fingers over the top, and we're going to be going this one straight into a claw. OK, so I'm just going to cut this one and I'm just going to slice that down. And each time I'm moving my hand slightly further down. Okay, I can use a lot of this leaf as well. I'm just going to cut 
cut into that. So each time, just moving slightly further down, thumbs and fingers inside, not gonna chop that down. So we use one spring onion for me today. There we go. So got some spring onion there. And I'm gonna use the wild one as well. Same thing, just gonna chop down there with a claw, moving it back each time. You can actually eat the whole of these wild garlics or um, three-cornered garlic or three-cornered leek. Um, you can actually use the whole thing. You can use the leaves as well, which um, are beautiful for garnishing and decoration on your foods. Um, and they taste yummy. Um, so I'm just gonna, a true convert to foraging food in this lockdown period. And there we go. All right, that is looking delicious smelling lovely if you could smell this one you'd think this is beautiful um it is all smelling really really good okay um so we've got spring onion there we've got onion in there all chopped up um in there um ready to go um we're gonna add into that some uh, seasoning um so we're gonna add some seasoning into that one now uh what sort of seasoning are we want we don't want to be using salt and pepper because that's not good for our salt's not good for our hearts we want to make sure um that we're having less salt in our diet but we need to flavour it. So how are we going to flavour it? Well, there's a few different flavours we can use. Um, we can use um, some, some green herbs. So we've got some parsley here. So if you've got some dried parsley in your in your cupboards there, there's some dried parsley you can put in, into um, there if you wanted to use that. Um, if you don't want to use dried parsley and you can get hold of the fresh stuff, fresh parsley, um, fresh dill. Dill goes beautifully with fish. So if you can get hold of some dill, that's wonderful. Um, that goes really nicely. Uh, now, um, we have, so I'm gonna just take you into my garden. Um, we're gonna go and grab some, some fresh parsley. Um, so let's go and grab some, some fresh parsley. I'm just gonna take you into my garden uh, and we'll go and grab some parsley. Um, here we go. Uh, so we've got some, oh, some down here, my herbs over here. We're gonna grab some, Parsley there. Um, oh, there's a bit of coriander that one. Uh, we got some. Ah, there we go. Right there. So we're just going to grab some parsley there. That's the one. Bit of fresh parsley. Um, beautiful from the garden there. So we're just going to go on my flower pots down here. So we've got some fresh herbs. Um, you know, we've got some uh, flat leaf parsley there. So I'm going to chop that one up. Uh, let's go back into the kitchen and. Uh, there we go. We'll go back to the kitchen and back to my work area. Sorry, I'm feeling a bit seasick there. Um, so we've got some fresh, fresh parsley there. You can use fresh or you can use uh, dried. Um, I, fresh is obviously better, better, nicer flavouring. Um, but dry will do good. We're in a lockdown lot of situations, so we need to try and use what we've got. So I'm um, just going to chop that one up, chop those herbs up nicely. Um, there we go. Chop those ones up nicely. Um, and I'll add some, some dried as well, a little bit of dried parsley in there as well. And some dill. A little bit of dill in there as well. Put that mix that one in. All right. So that's smelling again, lovely. We've got a nice little mix there, just as um, you can see there on there. We've got um, a mixture of our oh, nice green herbs there. Now, also to season it, I'm going to add some spices into this one. I'm going to add a little bit of um, ginger and paprika. OK, so um, I would say about a teaspoon of each is going to be absolutely fine. So let's just grab, grab a teaspoon and we're going to put a little bit of paprika on this one. So we've got some um, dry paprika in there. Um, there we go. You see it on the screen there. Paprika. OK, um, so we're going to put a little bit of paprika in there. Just going to put a teaspoons worth of that in. There we go. If you like it, uh, it gives you a nice earthy heat to this one. Um, it's the one, there we go. A nice one. Just going to add that into there. It's lovely. Um, and then into the mix, I'm also going to add um, some ginger. Now, again, if, if you like your ginger and you want some more ginger to go into that, you can put some more ginger into it. Um, if you've got, uh, there we go, it's got some ginger there. I'm just going to put some ginger on there as well. Oh, it smells good. That ginger is lovely. Just to spice things up. I'm going to put, do you know what? I'm going to put a second teaspoon of mine in because I do like a, a little bit. Of, do you know what? I'm going to go in with, that with the ginger. I love a bit of ginger in there. So um, we've got there um, ginger, paprika, um, we've got parsley, dill, but 
you can make do with your own herbs. So if you've got different sorts of herbs that you can, you've got at home, um, we can make do and work with those as well. All right. Um, OK, so now we've got all of our chopped up bits of uh, onion in there, our spring onion. We've got all our spices in there, our herbs in there. Um, what we need to do now is um, we are going to um, we're now going to add uh, the potato into that one and then we'll add the fish into that one as well. OK, so I'm going to add all of these, we're going to add all the onions, the herbs, the spices um, and the fish. And we're going to mix all of those together into a bowl. OK, um, so let's go back over now and we'll go and grab those potatoes. We'll mash them up and we'll bring those over. So let's go back to my, um, my hob, back over to the kitchen again now, to the other side of the kitchen. Um, so here we have um, back at the hob here. Um, so we've got our potatoes in here. Um, and we're now going to mash those up. So we'll just drain those ones off. Now you can use a colander for this. And we've just got a colander in the sink. Oh, what is a colander? Good question. Um, a colander, let me just grab your colander. Um, this is a colander. It's like a, a large sieve um, with holes in it. Mine's quite big, my one. Um, and we're going to use that one. There we go. We're going to use that one and we're going to drain our food off. So what I'm going to do, nice and safely, I'm going to put the colander inside the sink. Okay, so I'm just putting the colander inside the sink. Um, I don't know if you can quite see that one. Let's turn the camera around. Um, so the colander now is inside the sink there. And what I've got is my pan of water. I'm just going to pour the potatoes and the water into the colander. Put that off to the side here. Right, oh, there's one going to go. I'm going to give it a little shake, get all the water out there. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to mash that one up. So I'll put that one, I've got a glass bowl here ready to go so you can see what I'm doing. Um, the potatoes are now in there, steaming away nicely. And um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mash those up. So um, I've got a potato masher. Let me just grab on that one. Oh, no, it's at the table already. So we're going to mash those up and we'll combine all of those ingredients together. So uh, back over to the side here. Um, and I've got myself a potato masher there to put it all together. There we go. Right, fabulous. Potatoes, herbs, onions, spices, all in there together. We're going to mix all those ones in, OK? So that's what we're going to do now. Um, so we've got a potato masher. Here it is, my potato masher. And we're going to mash all of those potatoes, spices um, in with that one. So let's let's do that one. Um, and we're just going to start. We're just going to mash, mash, mash. Like I say, if you've got, um, if you're using a, a, a fresh potatoes, brilliant. Um, different, you'll find different potatoes mashed in a different way. Um, here we go. So Potato mashed. If you can see that one on the camera. There we have potato mash. Now the next thing we need to do is we're going to get all of those herbs and spices and onion into there. So let's just get all. I'm just going to put all of those into it, um, into my mix, so that they're going to be mashed up as well. And then we're going to go with the fish into this one. So all my spices are um, into the mix. So can you just see that onto there in the camera there? So I've got all my spices in there. I've got my potato, my onions, my um, my spring onions there, my wild onion in there, um, all of that in there. I'm just going to mash that a little bit more, all of that in together. It smells lovely. Again, if you've got smell of vision here, it would be lovely to smell this one. Now a little bit more of that into there. Paprika or ginger, if you want to, that's lovely. Oh, it's starting to turn, turn colour as well here um, because I've got the ginger in there and the paprika in particular. It's really starting to go a lovely colour. OK, I'm just going to show you that as I start to mash that in together for you. All right, here we go. So all mashed up in, the, uh, in there. You can see that one there. Um, the next ingredient we're going to add to this one is going to be our fish. Um, so we're going to be um, putting our fish in. Here is our fish. Um, so we're just going to be using some um, uh, dolphin friendly um, tuna, just some basic tuna here. Um, and you could use any kind of tin fish that you might have available for you there. So I'm just using my tin opener there. Um, I'm going to drain, uh, the, drain the liquid off. We don't want the liquid in there, but we do want the fish in there. Okay. So let's get that one in. It's just coming off there, sorry. 
and you'll be able to see what we're going to it's going to look like when we come together now when we've done that we're then going to um, work on uh, getting a nice coating to this one okay so we're going to work on a nice coating for it it's just coming up Oops, be careful with these tins not to cut yourself on them we don't want anyone cutting them but um, you can reuse them and we're going to use them I'm going to show you how you can reuse them today but you can also reuse them for um, pie tins um, you can use them for baking cakes into like mini cute little mini cakes um, cute little pies um, they're really good for doing that so you can reuse these things so I've um, just got the tin off there um, I'm going to just um, get the juice out of that one and just so the liquids out of this one so this is a tuna in brine um, so we're just going to get all the juice the liquid out you can have to uh, fish in all sorts just get the liquid out just to squeeze the liquid out of that so we don't need to use any of that liquid. Just gonna leave that one out. All the liquid out. right my fish is now going to go in with the mix so you can see that one there we go there's my mix you can see my mix in there I'm just going to put in the, all that fish into there now now I talked about something called denaturing um, which was a, a really interesting thing. I'm really going to have a bit of a theory lesson on this one. Um, so uh, that, will, that will echo what we're making now. But an interesting thing to do with fish. OK, um, let me just move that one down so you can see what we've got going on there. Um, let me move that one around the screen. Can you see that? Um, so we've got the fish in there. Now, fish is a protein. OK, so you're probably aware of that, that it's a protein um, and there are lots of things that are protein, which we're going to be using today. Um, there are some other things that are protein that we're going to be using, um, two of them, which are called eggs. Now, eggs are protein. Here we go. Um, here we've got my eggs. Um, we've got eggs here. Now, eggs are a source of protein as well. Right. The fish is a source, a really good source of protein. Um, the egg's got loads of vitamins in there, D, A, D, E, loads of vitamins in, the, in an egg. Um, and there's loads of good stuff inside the fish as well. Um, we've got um, essential oils, really good essential, really good um, oils, uh, which we've got in here. And these are um, omega oils, which are really good for you. Some really good fatty oils, which are good for you. And you need fat in your diet, small amounts, only a small amount, but you do need fat in your diet. Your brain is a third fat. So we need good fats like omega uh, fats now not all of them some there are different sorts out there um, but the stuff in fish is good you should have fish every week okay you should be eating um, fish every week it's a really good thing the government suggests that you should be doing that as part of your healthy eating guidelines um, so uh, try and make sure you are this is one way of doing that anyway getting back to protein so eggs are protein fish are protein um, and you know, other things think of meats as well um chicken um uh, any sort of meats like that which are protein based as well but think about protein alternatives as well so chickpeas actually got loads of protein and mushrooms loads of protein in. but when we're thinking about um eggs and meat um, and we think about cooking them or adding heat to them then we denature them now, what does that mean? Proteins are long chains of amino acids. OK, so they're like really long chains of amino acids. Think of um, uh, like um, a big bundle of uh, a big bundle of wood okay, or string. And then all these bundled up. Or um, if you think of something like a scour, a kitchen scour, where it's a bundle of uh, lemon long legs all scrunched up together. Now, what happens is when you add heat to this, or you can add some other things to denature protein as well, but let's talk about heat today. When you add heat to them, those long chains of amino acids begin to unfurl. And as they begin to unfurl, move apart, we have something called denaturing. And um, what you can visually see this one, um, and you can see it physically as well, um, when you use an egg white, for instance. So an egg white is liquid. OK, when it's in the egg, so we've got an egg white inside this liquid, which we'll get out in a minute. It's liquid. When we add the um, heat energy to it, those long chains of amino acids begin to unfurl and uh, come apart. Um, and so amino acids are the building blocks of protein and they begin in chains. They begin to unfurl and as they begin to unfurl, you actually begin to start to see something happening. The egg white, that is clear liquid, becomes slightly opaque. 
because as it's unfurling, it's taking on board more things like it's got um, the, um, and, and more things going to get inside it, like liquids and fats and all this stuff. We've got all these things that are going to be able to get inside it and air is going to be able to get inside. We're going to be unfurling. Now as it unfurls, it becomes more opaque. It also begins to thicken. Okay. Um, now, you know, if you've got a fried egg, it sets. Now that's what we call coagulation. But um, as it starts to go through this, this unfurling of and this this loosening of those long chains of amino acids. That's what we call denaturing. So when we're adding heat to proteins, we're denaturing. That's your word for today, denaturing. And we've got a bit of theory on that theory lesson on denaturing as well. Anyway, so we are going to be adding some heat to this fish, and that will change the colour of the fish as well. Um, um, it changes, if you think of a fish when you cook it and it begins to change that colour and it becomes thicker and harder and uh, as a fish and you um, uh, rather than it being a squidgy stuff it becomes a squidgy fish it begins to firm up that firming that changing color of a fish that's denaturing as well so um, lots of different ways that we can um, do denaturing as well it's not just heat we can add if you think about egg white if you whisk the egg white loads what happens it changes color becomes opaque then becomes white the white becomes white obviously um, and um, it becomes firm. You can actually, if you've never done it before, the bowl, you tip egg white on the, above your head and it stays in there and it doesn't fall over you, it becomes firmer and then eventually becomes solid and that's how you can do that. So it becomes denatured and then it becomes coagulated when it sets. There we go. Um, right, so I have now mashed up my um, potato, my onions, my uh, herbs, my spices. We have got that all mashed up together into a fish cake. Okay show you this now. Um, let's have a look so you can all see that one on the camera. Um, what I've got now is that all mixed up together. Can you see that? That's all lovely mixed up together into um, a wonderful squidgy, squidgy mess, which is what we want, that's what we're looking for. Um, that's perfect. Now, we're going to be going on and we're going to be um, shaping these ones now. So let's do a quick return to the recipe. Um, so it's a good chance to go because we're over halfway now. Well over halfway. Um, I'm going to just go back to the recipe so you can see where we're up to. Um, here we go. OK, um, so potato fish cakes. We've uh, boiled up and mashed up the potato. We've chopped up the onion and spring onions. We've added our herbs and spices. We've added all the onions and herbs and spices and mashed that all together with the fish. We're now going to remove the fish um, uh, mix and remove the mix, potato mix from the, the bowl. We're going to shape it and then we're going to fill up three down. Now you can do plastic bags here if you've got freezer bags. Um, but you can also just use a flat plate or a bowl and we're going to be getting three. OK, three is the magic number here. You're going to be putting plain flour in one, eggs in another and breadcrumbs in a third. We're going to be putting our shapes from one to the second to the third. Now, if you've got time and it's healthier, bake for four or five minutes on each side. Um, we're going to be trying to speed the process up today because we've got quite a, lot, quite a lot to go through. So I'm going to just I'm just going to quickly show you we're frying them. Not quite so healthy, but we're going to use some fry light, um, some uh, spray uh, fat so we don't get as much fat in it. But if you want to go fat free, you go, go straight onto a nice oven tray and go that, that way. OK, um, so we need to get three things ready to shape before we shape our, our food. And those three things are going to be egg. So we've got two eggs in one. We've got um, flour in another and then we've got red rocks. So let's return to me and we're going to go through that one in a bit more detail. All right. Um, hopefully everybody's following that one. OK, seems to be everybody seems to be OK so far. No comments um, otherwise. So let's uh, let's send myself live again and we're going to talk to you about the next bit. OK, so you can see now um, we we've got three things ready. Now, I've got three bowls here, but like I say, if you've got some, um, if you can, you can always use um, some bags there um, and use a like, freezer bag and you could put them three things in there if you wanted to um, and that would work. Um, but we want to try and reduce the use of plastic bags. So we're going to use a plate or, or going to use um, Use a plate or use some shallow bowls would be fine, okay? Um, but we need to make sure we've got everything ready, okay? So uh, to make sure we've got everything ready, um, we need to get all the bits and pieces. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put some flour. So I've just got some flour here. We're going to put some flour 
into our first bowl, okay? So I'm just going to put some flour into my first plate, or my first plate or shallow bowl, and that's ready to go. Next one, we're going to be putting some eggs. Now you can use the whole eggs for this one, two whole eggs if you want to. So I've got my eggs there, I'm just going to crack my eggs, uh, or you can just use the egg yolk, it's up to you. Um, I'm going to crack my eggs. One egg. Let's get the second egg. Okay, you might be thinking, where do I get flour during lockdown larder? Well, I have said it before, but um, the easiest way to get flour during the lockdown larder time is if you can't get it from the shops, is to go and speak to your local wholesaler that would be providing to your pubs, your restaurants, um, schools, and speak to them because a lot of them are delivering to houses now. So we're using um, Bid Food as our delivery. Bid Food is the company that delivers to our school at Talkie Girls Grammar, and they now deliver to households as well. So we're using that to order from myself and they'll deliver straight to you. If you're watching this on YouTube, Bid Food deliver all across the, na the nation as well. So you, you can speak to your local supplier there, or let's say Bid Food or your other local supplier does that. Another option is if you can't get hold of that, is uh, email or call your local pub or restaurant that you can walk to um, easily from your house um, as part of your exercises. Um, and then you can um, see if they might be able to leave some outside for you to pick up um, so you can still abide by your social distancing. All right, second uh, egg into there. Um, you might be thinking, where do we get eggs from? Well, I'm very lucky here. We have a farm um, around the back here. Um, but also try try your milkman. Milkman still to deliver eggs, so you could try those as well. So different ways of being able to get your eggs. Um, or social media. Anyone's got more eggs than somebody else in the street. You might be able to do some bartering. Um, if you've got some sort of food, there's lots of different ways of getting hold of these foods, and people are becoming more and more event. Um, uh, uh, more and more event, being more adventurous about how to get hold of your food and think about things. So we've got some nice ways of getting hold of these ones. So there's lots of different ways you can also do that one um, and still be able to get all the ingredients you need to be able to do this one. All right, so I've now got, and you can see there, I've got one bowl of flour, one bowl of egg. Now the next one I need to get hold of is I need to get some breadcrumbs. Um, so you can just use some old stale bread or you don't even need to use bread. Um, you can use a bread roll. Um, bread rolls will work fine or if you've got some I don't know, uh, pastries, croissant, I don't know, whatever you've got available bread wise to do this one, they would work. You, you can use um, crackers. They work really nicely. So, you know, like as, um, sort of uh, crackers you might have with the cheese. They work really well. They get, they get a nice finish on this. Um, you could also have got none of those old breakfast cereal. You know the bits at the bottom of a breakfast cereal? Perfect. All of those sort of things. So you don't need to. If you can't get hold of bread, um, that's another way of doing it. Now, if you are using breadcrumbs, what could you use? I oh, can use the coarse part of a um, cheese grater. So you can just grate that one down and that would work fine. I'm just doing that's exactly what I'm doing just in front of you right now. So I'm just going to be grating some down. So that's one way of doing it. Just grate it off. Um, another way to do it, if, you, if you've got, got it, you could use a little um, cutter. So we've got um, some sort of little, there we go, little mini mix, mini chopper. There we go. Look at that. I've got one of these little teeny tiny ones. Isn't it cool? Um, and we can just use one of those and that can, we can whiz them up. There we go. Look at that. Little food processor. Um, really teeny tiny one for chopping up our food. Um, so can... There we go. Look at that. Instant breadcrumbs. Um, so uh, there's lots of different ways you can create your breadcrumbs. Um, I've got mine in that one. You might need to do a few more like that. That's quite a quick way of doing it. Uh, so you'd say you can do a combination of ways. I'm just going to, you can see, you can see what I'm doing here. So we get my bowl. So cheese grater, it's one way of doing it. Um, and we'll just grate those down. Be careful of cheese graters. They're like mini little knives on there. So be careful when you're doing that one not to cut your fingers. Um, so that's one way of getting your breadcrumbs. I just say if you haven't got breadcrumbs, that's fine. Use, um, you can use lots of different things instead of breadcrumbs. You could use, um, instead of bread itself, you could do pastries and crumble up those. You can use any kind of stale one. You could use cereals, uh, crackers, cheese crackers. They would work fine. Um, but what you can use, and if you've got bread, stale bread, you, know, you can either use a, like either use a cheese grater or if you can whisk them up. There's your breadcrumbs in there as well. Get all those breadcrumbs out. So I've got three bowls now on the go. So I've got my flour, my egg, and my breadcrumbs all ready to go. Oh, 
KitchenAid, that's for later on, oh, I love it, don't have those at school. Um, we're using my KitchenAid for making some little bread rolls in a bit. Um, so I'll show you where those. Okay, so back to me. Yeah, everyone okay? Um, yeah, seems to be. Any questions, like I say, girls, just leave the questions down the side and I'll answer those. If you're watching on YouTube, leave your comments on the bottom there. Um, okay, so I've got my three bowls there. If you can have a look down at my work surface. And I've got my flour, I've got my egg, I've got my breadcrumbs. Okay, now, now I've got my three bowls ready and you can use bags if you want to save the washing up, but then obviously uh, um, be careful with bags. We don't want to be using too many bags. Plastic bags is not good. So um, I'm reversing and using plates as well, which is a much better way of doing it. I think it's a much more environmentally friendly way of doing it. Um, so we need to make our little patties. We're going to dip them into each of these bowls. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get them, uh, you can bake them in the oven or fry them off. Okay, so uh, uh, you can either use um, like a tray, some sort of trays there, or some or recycled trays there, tray tray, and we're going to make our patties and put them onto each of those. All right, so let's make the patties now and then we'll start to carry them. So to make our patties, we've got our mix here. And you remember I said you can reuse those tins for lots of things, those tuna tins or fish tins. You can use them for making little cakes and teeny tiny cakes, so cute. Uh, you could use them for um, putting tarts in, making little little tarts. So lovely. Uh, or uh, you can use them for this. Now, um, now to make your patties, you might think you could try and shape them into something like these, like a normal biscuit cutter. That will give you a nice round shape for your um, pastry, so you can use that. Or uh, you could use one of these. Do you remember that? That's your tuna tin. Now, um, we, if we're putting it into these, we need to take them out. So um, what can we do? You could put flour inside there. Now flour, when you put liquid with flour, it forms a gluey stuff called gluten, and it can be stickier to get out. So you can use something that hasn't got gluten in it. You could use gluten, um, anyway, you could use a couple of things. You could use a gluten-free flour. Um, that would work um, because there's no gluten in it. Um, or you could use, I'm using, using a, um, a, a rice flour. So I've just got a rice flour here. I'm um, just to coat my tin and I'm going to push them in, then turn them out. So I'm going to reuse those tins. So um, we're going to make use, make use and reuse our tins. I'm just going to put some of that into my tin. Okay, um, there we go. Just put that around the outside. I can grease that a little bit first um, with a brush and then just put that in. So I'm just going to put a little bit of that in. All right, um, so our, we're going to get a spoonful of our patty mix. Okay, I'm going to get my hands in there. Look at that. Beautiful. If you've got none of those, just get your hands in there. There we go. You've got nice clean hands. Form it into a ball and then you can just squash it. Okay, so that's another way you can make your patty. Or if I can say, if you want to, if you want to make sure that it's completely circular, Big fat patties. Now I'm going to reuse the tin. I'm going to push it into the tin. There, just coat it with flour. And look, tip it out, and you've got them perfect size there, almost like little burgers. Okay, so I'm just going to show you how that did that one again. So, um, put some okay, flour on the side there. Okay, so I'm push that into my tin, push it in really firm, and then I'm going to turn it out. A bit like turning out um, when you make a, um, a little sandcastle. Okay, but can you see that? Perfectly round. How oh, wonderful is that? Okay, now, once you've got that in place, we're then going to coat it. We're going to be coating it. We're going to use these three three items. So you can see the three bowls there. The first bowl I'm going to put it into is going to be my flour. So I'm going to coat it on both sides with my flour. Then I'm going to put it inside my egg. I'm going to coat it on both sides with my egg. Can you see that? Then it's messy this, I love this. We're going to put it into our breadcrumbs. I'm going to press it into my breadcrumbs. You see that? Bring breadcrumbs all the way around. Wonderful. 
Beautiful. Okay. And then, just going to put that one onto a tray. Wonderful. First one. Uh, so your trays can be lined with a greaseproof paper there. Make sure you've got that one all done. And uh, you can see that one. So hopefully you can see exactly what I just did there with those three pieces. Um, so we're going to be going into, and it does get very messy. Hey, I like messy. Um, we're going to be going flour, egg, breadcrumbs. So I'll do that one once more so you can all see exactly what I just did there. So the first thing we're going to do is going to get our mix. And make it into a ball. If you haven't got any kind of device for doing that with, so you can just get that and put it into a ball. Okay, so I've got that into a ball and you can flatten it, or you can use a cutter to make it the right shape, or you can even use the old tin itself, reuse it. Okay, so I've got my pattern, I'm going to make that one actually slightly bigger, I think. There we go. Now you can use your hands and say if you don't want to do that, you can just use your hands to form a patty. Then to coat, we're going to do three things. First, the flour, cover it with flour completely. Okay. Once you've done the flour, we're going to move on to the egg. We're going to cover that one. Oh, look at that gloopy, gloopy, gloopy. Then we're going to get into our breadcrumbs. Or like I say, you might have used cornflakes or you might have used um, crackers. If you haven't got bread. And we are now coating that one completely. And there we have the next of the ones. And we're going to bake those off as well. And I'll say grease free paper and carry on. So we're just going to carry on there. You should be able to get at least six out of that one. OK, so um, and then what you can do from there is uh, we'll just, just wipe, wipe my hands off. Um, what you can do from that is we can then just going to bake uh, those ones off. Uh, now you can bake them on five minutes on each side, or in fact, you could fry them if you wanted to. So we're going to have a go with that. Um, let's move the camera back over. Um, let's move it back over to me. Here we go. Just going to put that one back on the hob. So we can cook these ones off quickly for you now, but ideally keep it healthier. Grease proof paper into the oven much better for you than um, do, doing it this way, much healthier. Um, but just for speed, speed today, we're just going to quickly do those ones for you um, onto the top. So we're going to need a frying pan. OK, frying pan there. That's a non-stick frying pan. So if it's a non-stick frying pan, don't be using um, any kind of uh, metal. Because you start using a, a metal one on a non-stick one, it's going to scrape it. You can have black bits all over your fish cakes. Uh, it won't be nice, uh, it'll be bits of metal from the pan, okay? So um, when we're using this one in the pan, make sure you're using something wooden or some sort of spatula. You can use um, those heat proof there. So let me grab one there. So some sort of spatula you can use that's heat proof to move that one around. Um, we're going to be putting a little bit of oil in there. So um, let's just put a little bit of oil in there. We're going to just spray, spray oil in there. So um, we're trying to keep a little bit healthy there. Just put a little bit in the pan. Okay. Um, then we're going to fry this off very lightly um, into the pan. Health safe again. If you're holding them, it's okay. But you try and get your pan handle away from the where you're going to knock into it and away from any heat. Okay, so we're just going to put that one on the heat now, and we'll just three or four minutes each side, nicely golden brown. Just wait for that to heat up, um, and then we'll get that one in there. I'm just going to see if we've got. Where's the wooden one going? It's hidden away there. Oh, it's hidden right away. Container there. Okay, we've got a little scratch in there. Little wooden spoons, teeny tiny little wooden spoons, lots of different types of wooden spoons. Uh, oh, love looking at it. That's nicely ready to go. Uh, oh, there we go. Wooden spoon in there. There we go. Look, it's nice and clean. And dishwasher. Um, that's where it was. 
that. Um, right, so wood one, because we're using a nonstick pad, I'm going to just get this one up. That's the first of our patties. It's going to just go into the pan. Beautiful. Second of my patties. Let's do the second one there. There we are. Second patty in there. Not crabby patties, but you could use it. Why not? You could put crab meat in these as well. Make them crabby patties. Um, <laughs> like a certain cartoon character would be making. Um, so we could make crabby patties on there. But if you can just have a look at the pan there, we've just got a lovely shaped. And we can say they're lovely shaped because we've used yeah, um, we use a cutter, or you can use a cutter or a tuna tin to get them a beautiful shape there. So about three or four minutes on each side is going to be enough to make sure. Um, now, when cooking meat, we always should be making sure our meat gets to a certain temperature, and there is a meat in there. And when cooking meat, your temperature should get to 75 degrees ideally, because then you're going to be well out of what we call the danger zone. Um, so I've got a thermometer here, um, so we can check that the, the the largest part of the of this one is um, at the correct temperature. So I'm just checking that one now. I've got my check thermometer there. And we can actually check the largest part, the biggest part in the centre of it has got to our 75 degrees. So we should do that one. There we go. Mine's ready to go. Uh, it's, uh, it's 20 degrees outside at the moment in the kitchen. That's quite interesting. Uh, OK. Let's have a look. It just starts to come up. Don't be tempted to overwork them, OK? So don't be tempted to to uh, spend too long and keep prodding and poking them because they will fall apart, OK? So just leave them. I've got them on a low heat now. They're just cooking away lovely. I can just hear them sizzling away slightly. Um, I'm going to um, move a pan handle for off to the side there so no one can knock into it. I'm going to just leave that one for um, a few moments So and we'll come back to that. Um, so it should take about a couple of minutes on each side to cook those ones off. Um, just put the timer on there, uh, four minutes on each side um, while we're doing that one. All right, so now you've got your, your wonderful fish cakes made up, um, and that is the main part of today's lesson. Now, why did I mention bread rolls? Well, uh, let's talk about bread rolls. I'm gonna qu uh, quickly talk you through something that I'm, something that I'd like you to challenge all of you in the class with um, over the next couple of weeks. Well, the next week, brother, because the next practical we have, we're making pizzas. But I want you to make a different sort of pizza. I want you to make a sourdough pizza with me. Now, this requires us to do something special, okay? Now, we are going to have to make this. Now, this is Herman. OK, um, Herman has been my beautiful, beautiful mother sourdough. And I want you to all have a go at making your own sourdough. Now, this is brilliant for lockdown larder times because it's very hard to get hold of yeast. But I want you to make your own yeast. Now, um, don't be worried about thinking you're going to you're not going to make it alive, it's not going to live, or is you even going to kill it, okay? Um, it is very, very robust, okay? And I want you to see, if I pull it up to the camera, you can probably just see, there we go, look at the bubbles that are in there. Now, um, the species of microbes, the lactobacilli, um, lacto, lactobacilli, I'm trying to get my teeth back in, um, is a yeast, it's a wild fungus that floats all around us, okay? It magically is going to transform your flour um, salt and water into some amazing sourdough pizza bread. OK, um, now we need to think about how you're going to do it. So even if you forget to feed this, even if you think oh, I'm going to, I'm not going to be able to do this one, you will. It's very, very robust. OK, um, now what do you need to do to make this? This is a living thing that is bubbling away. Oh, it smells wonderful. It's soury. Can put the finger in there? It's very, very sour and bubbly and fizzy. But this is going to make you some most amazing breads and the most amazing pizza. OK, um, so what do you need to make? Over the next week, what I'd like you to do is put 300 grams of flour into a jar or a bowl. OK, I've just got a kiln type jar here, but any kind of 
300 grams. Uh, and I want you to put 300 milliliters of tepid water, not warm, not cold, somewhere in between. OK, nice tepid water. The flour ideally should be unbleached, but if you haven't got unbleached, just go with what you've got. Um, the water, what I do is I boil up the water in a, in a, and then let it go in a jug, pour the water into a jug and let it cool down. Ideally, you want to have something that's uh, it's like an unchlorinated type of water. And all our water is chlorinated and so or fluor got fluoride and different additives to it. So I boil up the water first, let it cool down to a really, say it's not warm, it's not cold, it's kind of that tepid. OK, um, and I put equal quantities, really, really important, equal quantities. So 300, 300 is perfect. Leave it. Don't do anything, just leave it, okay? Which seems odd, what are we gonna do? So, um, and you're gonna see these amazing things going on. Like I say, if you can just see that, I don't know if I'm gonna hold it really close. See all those bubbles that are going on in there? It is literally bubbling like a lemonade in there. Um, it's bubbling up. So what you need to do is you're gonna get 300 grams of each of it, okay? 300 grams of flour, 300 milliliters of of water, cover it loosely with a tea towel, leave it in a warm spot in the kitchen, or outside, I've been leaving mine outside for a bit, but you want to make sure it's covered, loosely covered, so you don't going to get any bugs in it. Okay, well that's my buzzer to go and get turn, turn them around. Um, what you'll see, keep an eye on things, stir it every now and then, especially if the water starts to, um, if the water and flour starts separating, keep stirring it, and then after a few days, it should start to bubble. Now what do you do? I'm just going to go back over to the other side because it's just a uh, buzzer's going. Uh, let's, uh, let's just split these ones over. Um, uh, so it should. Oh, these are looking lovely. Patties are looking gorgeous. I'll show you. Can I show you those ones? I'll show you those ones. Let's show you on the camera. Can you see those patties on there? How good do they look? They smell amazing. Anyway, coming back to my sourdough. Um, uh, let me just put so I don't I remember. So, yeah. um, so coming back to my sourdough. 300 milli, 300 grams of flour, 300 milliliters of tepid water. Leave it, leave it covered, loosely covered. Now, the reason I say loosely covered is if you don't leave it loosely covered, it's going to explode. OK, um, this stuff is producing gas. There's bubbles in there. That's CO2. They're breathing. OK, they're going to be feeding off the flour um, in there. Um, and this yeast is like a fungus, fungus like a yeast is going to be feeding off that and it's going to be breathing. OK, so we're breathing away and creating some. If you put a sealed top on it, seal it tight, it's going to go bang. All right. So um, don't put it in a bowl or in a jar that's loose. OK, so I've got these kilner type ones. So you can just put it on very just literally just loose, leave that loosely on the top and very leave it just loose on the top. And then if it were to, it's just going to bubble out through the top. All right. Now. After a day or so, you should start to see bubbles coming through this one. Just like those wonderful bubbles that are on there now. Can you see those again? I'm going to just hold it up. I'm so impressed with my, my lovely thing that's working for me. Um, so what you need to do as you start to see bubbles, pour about half the mixture away. OK, so pour half the mixture away. Replace it with 150 grams of flour and 150 milliliters of tepid water. OK. Tip it away? Yeah, absolutely. So tip away half and put half back in. But remember, equal quantities of flour and tepid water. OK, and just keep doing that. So yeah, do that again. Leave it as it starts to bubble up again uh, the next day. Two days, maybe depends on how long it's going to take. Maybe a day, maybe two days. Take off half, replace that half. Equal quantities flour, water, OK? After five days, oops, got a bit. After, that, after five days, five days, you will have something that is bubbling up regularly, beautifully regularly, well, and you'll also have something that tastes really sour and will be continuously bubbly like this. And that is yeast, and that yeast is ready to start cooking with. So how do I normally do it? Well, you might have at home these seven gram, um, so we got here some like seven gram sachets of fast action yeast. OK, or you might not be able to get hold of them anymore because they're very hard to get hold of. So you replace it with 10 times the amount of this. So we're going to put in 70 grams of this. Whenever it calls for one sachet, you put you put uh, 70 grams of this because those sachets are normally seven grams, 10 times the amount into your mix. 
You also need to prove it, <laughs> and this seems odd, for about 10 times the amount. So whereas you normally prove it for an hour, you need to prove this for about 10 hours. So generally speaking, I leave this overnight when I'm making bread or croissant or um, what else I'm using to make this one. So I, I tend to prove it overnight, somewhere warm, air and covered when we're making bread and you'll get the most amazing one. So for next week, I want you to start to create this, girls. I want you to create your own sourdough yeast. And then we can just scoop out spoonfuls of this and make our flour. Um, so how do we do that one? Well, very simply, like I say, um, you use it in the same way that you'd use a normal bread. To make normal bread flour, you need 300 grams of flour. Okay, so we need 300 grams of flour. So I'm just gonna put that one into there. Let's put this 300 grams into the pan. I normally just do 300 grams as a nice easy one to remember for each of these okay so um here we go units on just gonna set that one if you haven't got scales at home handfuls works fine so we're looking at 300 grams so let's put in 300 grams in there just gonna put 300 grams of flour that's that just to go back to my patties let's do that one three Okay, 300 grams of flour. 300 grams of flour in there. Okay, can you all see that in there? Um, in with the 300 grams of flour, we need to put a little spoonful of, a teaspoon of sugar. So let's just get a teaspoon of sugar in there. Teaspoon of sugar. And then some salt. So we're gonna put a little bit of salt. I'm just gonna go back over to the, and just have a look at these fish cakes which should now be perfectly done. Let's have a look. Oh, they are wonderful. Lightly brown on both sides. Let me just quickly show you that. They are my patties. Done, let's turn the timer off. Now, um, uh, they are wonderful. You can reheat those ones and they are gonna be beautiful. Patty's done. Um, so like I said, all I want to do is gonna quickly show you how to make a bread flour. So three hundred to make bread rolls. We've got 300 grams of flour in there, put a teaspoon of sugar in there. I'm gonna put a little salt just inside there. There's the salt. A little bit of salt down the side. Activate the gluten in the flour, helps it go through. Okay, get that all that working. Um, so we've got flour, we've got sugar. Sugar's going to be for our um, for our yeast to feed on. Okay, and then we're going to put the yeast in. Um, so a little bit of oil, a little bit that tablespoon of oil in there as well. So a tablespoon of oil in there. There we go. Just a bit of olive oil in there. Beautiful olive oil. And I'm going to put my yeast in now. Do you remember what I said there? How much? You think about normally if you put a sachet of yeast in, so a sachet of um, your yeast there would normally fast action yeast be about seven grams. So we need to put 70 grams of my beautiful, beautiful, beautiful yeast. Now, once you've taken out of this and used it for baking, do the same as you did before. You need to replace it with equal quantities. So I'm going to put 70 grams in. If you can see that, it is just bubbling away in there. That's fine. Ooh, it's loads of it just bubbling away. It's beautiful. Now then you're going to need to knead it. And you're going to bring it together with some warm water. This is just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So we're on 30, so we need to do the same again. It's bubbling away. We're feeding off that flour. And this we can make some beautiful pizzas out of or beautiful bread rolls. There we go. And it is literally bubbling away as it tastes like fizzy lemonade. There we go. Last little bit in there. So in there, I've got 300 grams of flour, got my yeast, my sugar, salt, a little bit of oil in there. I'm going to stir that together and then I'm going to knead it. Now, again, just because we got just because I'm at home, I've got my lovely KitchenAid here. I'm going to put it into there. 
um, so we can uh, do it quickly. But if you get it into a bowl, start mixing it with a spoon, um, that would be great. I'm just going to switch that one on. Um, that's just going to knead together um, as it would do normally when we're kneading it by hand. Just going to quickly add some warm water to bring that together. And then leave it afterwards. So knead it for about 10 minutes. And a little more water to bring that together. Okay, that's starting to come together into a dough ball now. Now what's happening is the flour inside there has got two proteins called gliadin and glutenin. And what's going to happen is that gliadin and glutenin it's going to start to form a new protein called gluten in there. It's going to form the stretchiness of our bread. Okay, so we're nearly done there. Last little bit. Oh, get it faster. But you can just do this by hand. And when you do this by hand, you're going to use the palm of your hand, you're going to use the heel of the palm of your hand, and you're going to stretch it back and forth. Just to try and get you some uh, quickly done here. I'm using my kitchen aid with a dough hook on it so that it can just pull it all together. If you haven't got one of these, just start kneading those mixtures together. Um, use a wooden spoon to get it together and then start kneading it all together. Okay, that's coming together well. So you get a little bit more warm water in there. Nearly. All right, so just for, I'd normally do this for 10 minutes because I've now got it in the kitchen aid. It's doing that for me a lot faster and you can probably see now. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And there we have got a wonderful glutinous bread dough ready to go. Now, what am I going to have to do with that? I'm going to have to lead that one now to, to, to uh, prove all the yeast to blow bubbles into it. And it's going to make the most amazing bread dough as it's going to be using it for making our bread rolls today, but uh, making your pizzas next week. OK, um, now. I haven't got all night to do it. So here is some I prepared earlier. I uh, left that one overnight ready for today. So we can now move on to the final bit to make our bread rolls. OK, so we uh, here's some true blue Peter fashion. Here's some I prepared earlier. OK, and um, so you're going to leave, say normally leave that one overnight. So I'm just going to clean my deck so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, all of the bits off there. Um, so you're going to need to put preheat your oven here to um, something like a, a gas, not quite a high one there. Um, you're going to be needing about 220 degrees, OK? So um, 220 degrees um, and we're going to bake this for about 30 minutes, OK? Um, uh, now, baking them until they're golden brown. So depending on how big, if you're making a whole bread, a whole loaf, that would be 30 minutes. Um, but if, you, if I just quickly flash back to the recipe card. And you can see that with this one, because we're making smaller rolls, it's going to take less time. So what I've done here with yeast, in case you couldn't get hold of the sourdough, so 300 grams of plain flour, dry yeast in there. Um, we've got a bit of salt, a bit of sugar or honey in there. If you haven't got any uh, sugar, you can use honey in this. This is fine for our lockdown larders. Think of alternatives. Combine in there 250 milliliters of warm water. Knead for five minutes until smooth. Now, you're going to divide the mixture into four equal pieces. Form into the doughs, uh, balls. Uh, roll each one out to a circle, leave in a warm place for 20 minutes if you've got fast action yeast. If you're using sourdough, then you need to obviously leave that one um, uh, overnight, ideally, to get the perfect perfect one on there. And we're going to bake until golden brown. Now I've got my sourdough um, here that I left overnight, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to divide that one up to make my bread rolls. Now because they're small bread rolls, this is going to take 20 minutes, not half an hour, okay? Oops. 
20 minutes and not half an hour. So we're nearly done, everybody. I'm going to just quickly show you the last little bit to make our bread rolls. Okay, now hopefully you can now see, let's clean my board down, my wonderful sourdough. Now, I don't know if you can quite see the bubbles, but this has literally got a honeycomb of bubbles over the top of this. It's beautiful. I'm going to cut this up. I'm going to make it into three. Now, it's going to deflate a little bit, but don't worry about that. I'm going to just cut that one. Sorry, four, rather. Cut that one into four. Half. Half again. Whoops. Ah, there we go. The top's on there. Sorry about that. Um, half again. There we go. So I've got my four halves. And I'm going to make then, I'm going to form those into circles and I'm going to put them on a tray and we're going to bake those ones. Okay. So very simply, four pieces there. A bit of flour on my hands. A bit of flour on the top there. I'm going to form these ones into some beautiful circles. Now you can either prove them in the bun shapes, as I said in the recipe card, or prove them in the whole loaf. And what I'm doing here is I'm stretching the top and pushing all the rough bits underneath. So I'm turning it, and as I do it, turning it, I'm just going to serve that, form those into my beautiful bread rolls. There we go. Beautiful bread rolls here, four beautiful bread rolls that are going to pop up in the oven. And be wonderful. And then what I'm going to do with these bread rolls, once they've popped up in the oven, I'm going to cut them in half like burger baps. And I'm going to put my little fish finger patty, but uh, like little burgers inside them and have those ones for beautiful lunch today in about 20 minutes. Four bread rolls ready to go. Final thing we're going to do on there, we're going to brush them with a little bit of egg wash. OK, so final thing for today's lesson. I know we're finishing a little bit early, but you've got to tidy up there. Um, so the final thing we're going to do for today's lesson is going to use, brush them with a little bit of um, egg yolk. OK, now you can use. Um, so egg yolk or, or the whole egg. You can use a couple of things to do this with. I've got, here we are, I've got a little, instead of a pastry brush, if you haven't got a pastry brush, I've got a little pastry brush there. You could use a paintbrush. It's a clean one that you've not used before. You use one of those or you can just use your fingers. So I'm just going to brush these with a little bit of egg. So what I'm going to do is I'm use, brush those with a little bit of egg on the top so they've got the golden brown. You can just see what I'm doing there, just brushing those so they're going to be golden brown when they come out and beautifully glazed. On there. Now, if you want to, you can put some seeds on top of this, some sesame seeds if you wanted to at this point. Can do. It's totally up to you. I'm just going to glaze these ones over beautifully. The glaze is um, an egg glaze. The egg glaze will is like a protein. Now, to revisit the learning, the protein when it's heated up on the top of the wonderful bread rolls here, it's going to do what? Can anyone remember? Can you remember what that word is? Can you remember what the word is that we say when protein is had? We add heat energy to it. Those long chains of amino acids are going to unfurl. They're going to do something. That word we said when proteins change in that way, when you add the heat to it, you can do other things to it to make them unfurl. When you add heat to it and they unfurl and they change from being a liquid, which is what I'm brushing on these now, they turn and that other thing is called denaturing. OK, so we're going to denature and it's going to form a wonderful glaze on the top of my buns. So I've now got beautiful, four beautiful buns there, sourdough buns, ready to go into the oven. They were proving last night. Um, remember, like I said, what I'd like you to do for next lesson, next double lesson, is I'd like you to start having a go at making a sourdough. There's plenty of recipes and guidelines online, hundreds of different things you can do with them. You can add, add things to them. You can add yogurts to them. You can add apple to them to make them go different tastes and go faster or slower. I'm going to let you have a look into that, but I'd like you to find this to make a sourdough. All right. Right. Um, thank you very much. The final thing I need to say to you all, um, let me just quickly flip, flip back to those um, the recipes card. The final thing I need to say to you all is washing up and clearing up. OK, so collect all your equipment you use, wash everything up using the right method. OK, be careful with your knives. We talked about knives earlier. If you're washing up with your washing up the knives. Make sure that's the first thing you do. Don't use a cloth. Um, use a brush if you can and brush away from the edge of the knife. Put that on the back of the training board to dry. Don't put it in the front where it can fall off. OK, so wash and dry carefully. Dry with a clean tea towel, everything with the exception of the knife because you want to let that drip dry. Don't want that to be um, cutting through the towel and cutting you. 
put everything away once checked by your teacher. Well, I know there's no teacher there to check them, so you can make sure the grown up, whoever's at home with you at the moment, can check that you've cleaned up properly. OK, um, so next lesson, don't forget, I want you to. Uh, oh, yeah, there we go. So watching up and clearing. Um, the next lesson, I'd like you to have a look at uh, creating your own sourdough. Um, and let me just click back there. So the next lesson, I'd like you to have a go at making that your own sourdough ready for making a pizza. Um, if you if it doesn't work, um, if you if, if you can't make your own sourdough, if it doesn't work for whatever reason, or you can't get hold of making it and you've got yeast, then you can use yeast next lesson and do that one instead. OK, so um, last thing to say is uh, take care, stay safe, look after yourself, look after others around you, and I'll see you again for our next of our practical lessons. Thank you very much. Bye. Okay, for work. Do you want to come?